Hello, can everybody hear me okay? Um, what I wanted to say is this is going to be an overview of Milan. It's not like the top 20, the best, etc. It's more of an introduction to people who've never been. Um, and it's also a, a sort of guide to what you could see if you do go or what, what you might have missed if you, you went there for just a couple of days. I was there, fortunately, for a week. It's not enough. It's such a massive exhibition and event. It takes over the whole city. It's quite amazing because it's very different to other events in um, other parts of the world because the smallest cafe that exists will have something to do with it, or the biggest gallery, or the showrooms, etc., etc. And there's lots of different design districts. So I'm just going to kind of give you an idea of some of those things that I saw. So hopefully um, you'll enjoy it and have fun. Just to give you some statistics, if you've not been, it's the 56th year of Salone. Um, it's on early April, but it got moved because of Easter. 2,000 exhibitors, huge space. As you can see, 300,000 visitors plus from lots and lots of countries. And every two years, they have Eurolucci. Eurolucci is um, the sort of lighting exhibition. And then every time in between that, they have Eurocachina, which is for kitchens. And... I would say that Eurolucci never disappoints. It's one of those really satisfying exhibitions because it's all about lighting. And in my mind, lighting is one of the most important things in interior design. It really does um, sort of make an interior. Just to put everything into context, Milan, northern Italy. As I said, there's lots of different districts. Um, so Milan itself is the main kind of area, but there are these different design districts within it. Um, Super Studio is one of them, which is also part of Tortona. Um, you've got Ventura Centrale, which is a new area, which is part of the old sort of train station. They've got a hundred, this would never happen in London, but they've got a hundred disused arches. I mean, here there would be cafes, there'd be internet, it would be all sorts of things, but they just don't even use them. So this year they actually use them for exhibiting some of the um, different products and shows and things like that, that, which is fantastic. So, again, just to put things into context, here you have number one, which is the main fair, slightly out of the centre, and then all these other numbers, they give you an idea of where the different districts are within Milan. So there's a lot of travelling, a lot of walking around, a lot of getting on the metro, but that's also part of the fun of it. Um, so this is not really to scale in as much as you can't really get an idea, but this is a, a map of Saloni, the main sort of fair. Um, if you imagine the NEC in Birmingham, which has several very, very large halls, that's what these are. So the, you have um, Saloni Satelliti and you have the kind of yellow ones which represent Eurolucci. But these, this is like, I don't know, probably a kilometre. It's huge. It's absolutely vast. Um, but it just gives you an idea of how many halls that you might have to see. Um, so as we go through, you see USM, very well established company. They had a new lighting system that they'd incorporated into their existing storage system, which doesn't sound that exciting, but it's very clever because there's no sort of wires to it. And so it means that their system has become something a little bit more animated. And as much as it might seem like it's storage just for offices, you can use it in the home and all sorts of applications. And this was the stand that they had at the main fair. Um, and then they had a very big sort of party and event um, and again, it shows how useful it is in terms of display, a DJ booth. Um, and this is something that's designed, you know, a long time ago, back in, I think it's in the 60s. So it's had a long history, but it's proven that simple design really, really works. This is the party that they had, which was in the new uh, Museum of Culture. And uh, it's a fantastic space. Absolutely lent itself really well to... Um, their system because it was all about light. Salone Satelliti, that's part of the main fair as I mentioned earlier and it was celebrating its 20th year this year and they have um, basically a platform with lots of students and new designers coming up so you have lots of experimental design so these are the people that will be the designers of the future showing off what they can create now. Um, and there was one particular designer, Olivia Lee, that stood out to me. I looked at every single stand. There were probably about 40 or so. 
But what was interesting about her work is that not only was it very on trend, but it was also extremely well produced, so very commercial. So as much as it might be a student designing this, this is something that I feel could go to market immediately. Yurilucci, as I said, again, huge part of the main fair, really um, can't kind of explain how wonderful it is. I love lighting, maybe I'm biased, but you do see lots of creative things there. Um, you've got top left, you've got creation by Anthony Dickens. Um, that's something that's taken quite some time to, come, to um, sort of develop over about five years with a company called Santa and Cole. And then you also have lighting, which was kind of quite sculptural and elegant and sort of um, decorative and not necessarily functional. Um, but also then you have lighting that is going to sort of demonstrate that there are trends between materials like glass and metal, and there's a lot of that. Um, I wanted to introduce, talking of that, the next um, slide is uh, Matteo Bianchi. He's a designer that has launched a collection for Penta called Acorn, um, and he's here this evening. So I want to um, give him a warm welcome. He's an interior designer um, working in London, originally from Venice, um, has a fantastic portfolio of furniture and interiors work and uh, wanted to introduce him so that give somebody give you an idea about um, what it's like to actually launch a product at Milan and not just sort of look at things but give some insight to that so welcome Matea thank you, you have a seat? Yeah. so just got a few questions um, which I will go through um, and then hopefully uh, give you the audience an idea about uh, how you came about this. So, first of all, um, why did you create this collection for Penta? Okay, so the Acre collection was, just... um, um, was originated about three years ago. So, some said one year is about Eurolucha lighting, and another year is about kitchen and bathroom. So three years ago, I went there and I spotted this kind of big coming trend of having a lighting over your basin in the bathroom. So we all work in the same industry. We know that clients do spend all the money in the bathroom and we tend to get the lighting perfectly right for the bathroom. So I saw this trend and at that time I was working on development in Baker Street and there were five flats, uh, two bathrooms per flat. So in total, 10 bathrooms. And we're very cheeky because we, we kind of sketch a light over the basin and, uh, and, and the mirror. And the thing about Milan is that they always tell you what's coming in next year or two. So whenever I go to Milan, I kind of know what's coming up in the next year or two. So you see trends, don't you? You, you do. Yes. Yeah, it's very, yeah. very clear. It's, yeah. it's exhausting. It's so well yes. so you come back with a full picture of what's going to be uh, the market life. So we sketched that into you know, in front of a client. He loved it. And they said, well, where can we find it? And I said, well, I've done not yet, but it was today. <laughs> and then I went back to one of my sales reps, which is here standing in front of me, and I said, um, look, I've got 10 of those lights. It, they're sold. The client loves it. Can you get someone to make it? And he said, just leave it to me. So I went back to Penta, and they liked the idea. They understood that there was a 90 rated pendant kind of niche missing the market, because even nowadays, when you Google IP rate dependent, there's still not that much into the market. So I went to the supplier, they liked the idea, and about six months later, we had it. And that's, and that's the fitting itself. And it's, um, it's called Aiken because it's, it's got a shape of an Aiken. You're answering my next question, but carry on. <laughs> it's all right. No, carry on. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, 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 go on. So it's um, the, 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 the way it was designed was to be very functional because at the end of the day, it's an IP rated, it's IP44. And we wanted to combine something quite feminine like glass to make it quite transparent, quite soft, quite delicate. But at the same time, because it's sort of meant to stand next to you, we want to give a bit of core, but a bit of a... Um, um, Bit of a materiality, if you want, and we so basically it's a shape, it's a, it's a base of glass, and there's a concrete paste on it, yeah. and that's how Aiken was born, really. Okay, 
Um, so, I mean, I think you've answered some of the things I was going to say next. Is like, where do you see this collection being used? I suppose because it's IP rated, it being bathrooms, kitchens. Yeah, initially but, it was meant to be uh, an IP rate dependent, and then um, obviously in every project that we do, we, we kind of place it there, and the client really starting to use it and like it anywhere in the house or in the office, and um, and then I suppose every supplier that starts seeing that one product is selling. To start thinking what could be the next step, and that's how the whole collection started. So, in, back in December, they asked after they've been to Deprex, they asked me, Why don't we just get this life fitting to become a family? And that's how you can see the full potential of a product. And that, that, was, the, that was the result in Milan, and that was the installation that they launched in Milan. And what I like about this is that there's a story to it because you didn't just think, I need to design a light for. Milan, that you know, because lots of people design lights, and you could launch 25 lights, and we'd be overwhelmed with lights. But it's actually there was a need, and the client saw that, and then you developed them from there, which is great. So, um, what sort of response did you get to launching this in Milan? Uh, it's interesting because uh, they placed it right at the beginning. I was quite lucky that they placed it right at the beginning of the stand. And Penta is a company that is kind of coming back, it used to be very. Uh, a quite a big player and in the last two years they really came back into the market and there was a, they had a massive stand, it was a really good stand and they placed this at the beginning. So I was kind of lucky with that. But I sat in the corner I sat in the corner and I was kind of seeing the reaction of of, of the customer and everyone was just parting and they just kind of stopped in front of it. Perhaps because of the material, perhaps because it's got different shapes, because perhaps because it's it's kind of a strange combination between mm glass and concrete, so the reaction seems to be quite genuine and good. But yeah, this is great. You, you, the salesman will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And um, last question then, what, what next for you? Uh, there's, uh, so this is kind of the mini one, but there's going to be a mini mini one, because one of the big trends at the moment is to have a very tiny light uh, as a ribbon light. So whenever we design a bedroom, there's always your headboard, you've got the bedside table, and then you've got a tiny little reading light on it. So that is coming up, and they're actually making it. And they, I asked them to do different kind of shades or paste if you want. Because uh, if, if you don't like the, the sort of um, industrial look, you're probably cutting half of the market away. So I asked them to do a kind of a more sophisticated colour. So it should be either charcoal or copper or something that's well. That's what they're kind of working on at the moment. Excellent. All right. We look forward to seeing that. Thank you very much, Mateo. Great. Okay. Carrying on then. Um, Airbnb. Everybody knows who Airbnb are. I was lucky enough to stay in an apartment in Stockholm when I went to the design um, week there fantastic apartment and uh, they had a big presence in Milan and what they did I think was very very clever is that they uh, managed to negotiate that they would display the works of certain designers in a house where Leonardo da Vinci lived whilst he was painting the Last Supper so this is a house with real history um, and heritage and huge scale. It's incredible that it's in the, the center of Milan because this is the garden. They had a breakfast there and uh, very kindly invited through uh, David Morris of Design Exchange Magazine. And um, it was a really lovely experience to be somewhere that what they said was typically Milanese. So as much as you have the, the fair, which is very commercial and it's like big buildings and you have other things going on, they wanted to kind of basically get back to what Milan is about. Um, and this is some of the house, which is just an amazing, incredible space. Um, it was so nice to be able to kind of walk around. Again, as you see, there's different artifacts that were created by designers throughout the space. Um, and some of it, you couldn't really tell whether it belonged to the house or whether it belonged to the designer. Um, one thing that does happen when you're in Milan is that you can, you may have a strategy, you may have a plan to go from <laughs> Lambrata to Tortona or from, uh, I don't know, Super Studio to the main fair. 
but then there's always something that distracts you and it could just be a little opening, a doorway or something like that. And that's exactly what happened to me. I was on the way to somewhere else and I saw this doorway into this beautiful courtyard and it was El Decor and it was also in tandem with Mini. I'm a bit of a car head. So that attracted me. And as you can see, this beautiful courtyard here, which had a cafe, bar, relaxing space. I mean, the weather in Milan this year was fantastic, so it was great to be outside. It's like 25 degrees the whole week. It's really, really lovely. And the whole idea with El Decor, and this doesn't really come through in some of these images, is that it was like a new concept for shopping. So what you did is you walked around this space and they had a virtual reality um, headset and you could get a chip from the entrance, reception area, and the chip basically would then recognise things that you liked and they would send you information about that. Or you could actually see things within the space that weren't there and you could change the specification and the colour and the lighting. So it's very technology based and that's something that came through very strongly in Milan this year and a lot of the shows that I've been to. Technology is so, so important, but it's also mixed with heritage. So it's really quite interesting combination. Again, another big brand. Um, I don't want to concentrate just on the big brands, but they're important. IKEA, they created almost like a village and um, very much about selling their furniture, but also in creating an environment where you think this isn't really what you see as IKEA. So this was very much about fun. Um, they had a slide. So people basically just took a rug and literally slid down that. Um, adults, kids, etc. Very, very inclusive. It was fantastic. Really good fun. So they created rooms as well. This is like a room for nature. Again, that's something that came through very strongly. It's a very strong trend that is not going to go away. I mean, trends do last five, five seven years. There's micro trends, macro trends. This is very much a macro trend about bringing inside out, inside to the, the outside to the inside, um, surrounding yourself with plants and living nature. So this was the IKEA area. As you can see, they had like room sets like they have in the shops. They, hadn't, they didn't have the arrows on the floor, thank goodness. But so you were free to go wherever you liked. Um, they even had prices on some of the items. So they, they were very commercial and you could get the meatballs as well. You had to exchange, you had to get vouchers to get the meatballs. Um, but they were clever in that, you know, you could buy cushions, but you could buy larger items as well, but then they had these room sets, which, you know, that's an Ikea sofa, but they made it look like an artist studio, so it's so much more creative. They had lots of areas for children to play, they had lots of areas just for sitting and lounging and drinking as well, um, and then they, they made sure that you were aware of the festival by just stamping the festival um, graphics on the streets of Milan, everywhere in Milan, so you, even though that wasn't anywhere near it, you just were aware of it. The very, very strong branding. Swarovski, a brand that people know as having lots of delicate, fine, fussy, perhaps, jewellery and crystals and things like that. They, again, secured a very beautiful house, which you weren't allowed to photograph the house, but you were allowed to photograph the actual Swarovski items. Um, Atelier Swarovski is very much for the home. Uh, they have engaged lots of very big name designers. This is um, Zaha Hadid's creation in the, the center. And um, it's about things that are much more delicate, um, it, lots of use of color. The bottom right, that's by Barbara Barry, the American designer. And uh, she created um, some uh, candle holders that you could turn upside down. So you could use them one way for a, one size of candle and turn them up the other way for another size. And she used watercolors for her sort of um, development of her sketches, etc. This is a company that's very interesting because it is doing something slightly different to other people. It's very quirky. It's an Indian company. They've only been going for a few years, like two or three years, so almost a startup. Very, very successful, using lots of the colours that are on trend, but also being a little bit different with it, using lots of metals and lacquers. Um, and distribution is going mad. Everyone seemed to love it because it was just not just a square box, but it's something different and it's very, very well made as well. This is a lovely installation, a uh, Japanese designer with LG. Again, technology playing its part in Milan. I've got photographs of this because, again, it's quite difficult to film something like this. And it was really an installation where you went through a very small black 
opening into a vast space that was like a warehouse. And they had these, what were similar to chairs really, but light going through those pieces of glass. Um, beautiful, really relaxing. Um, you can see how it kind of changes color. And then there was an, an area where you could actually sit on one as well and they would take photographs of you. That, that kind of changed color. So it's extremely immersive, it was beautiful really. And there was a wall just full of LEDs. You imagine probably three times the size of this wall here. And that would go full brightness and then it would go absolutely dark. So it was mesmerizing, you could literally stand there for hours. And the reason why there's a, a, a number of people standing there is just because it's quite delicate and they needed to kind of make sure people didn't touch and ruin it. But it's just a lot of very square OLEDs. So again, technology showing how it can be used in the interior and lighting, again, obviously very, very important. Um, and that gives you some idea of the kind of scale of it um, and the silhouettes, which again is quite, quite beautiful. Lee Broom, British designer, he was part of the um, exhibitions that saw in the railway arches. He was celebrating 10 years of um, his uh, company, um, so he came up with Time Machine. It was a carousel and that was continually sort of moving, rotating, but very, very slowly. Again, it's something that was quite mesmerizing. There's a lot of that in Milan where you go to see something and it wasn't just a static piece. It was actually something that you got involved in. Um, and that was a very good way to display it because the arch itself was quite bare and quite old. And, and, and he wanted to kind of contrast that by having something that was not attached to the perimeter at all. Cartier. Um, yeah, mad gold <laughs> um, with people in kind of red jumpsuits. So it doesn't have to say this is what we do as a company, but it's more about a presence um, and what we can do or what we just want to experiment with. Louis Vuitton, um, people were queuing around the block literally for this. Um, and this was very much to do with travel and it was um, in a beautiful building again. Um, very much about craft and using materials and, and leather in particular and how that kind of tied in with the, the quality of their brand and how you could create pieces with that. <laughs> Diesel, another fashion brand going into furniture, um, quite sort of relaxed and not necessarily using denim but sort of associated with that sort of feel of things, uh, not kind of really squared but quite sort of casual and uh, cos uh, cosseting and cosy and uh, plates and other th tableware like that as well so again a brand that you might not think would be involved in furniture and that kind of thing but absolutely and quite a lot of it as well the diesel stand was quite quite prominent Cos is one of the fashion brands that has been involved in Milan for quite some time they always have an absolutely fantastic installation. This is in an old cinema. Again, people queuing around the block for this. Um, and they basically, um, it's Studio Swine, they created this installation where you had these bubbles with scented um, sort of smoke in them. It's the best combination, best description I can uh, give you. And, uh, and they would just explode in your hand. So it was just it's something that you just wanted to kind of be in and be with all the time. Lensfeld, yeah, this company, they had an installation, again, in one of these arches in the railway. Really amazing, um, because these little cones had voices coming out. Um, so you just kind of wandered around, and it sounded like lots of little people were talking to you out of these little cones. Um, it was almost like sort of little radios going off everywhere. It's fantastic. Mui, huge brand, Marcel Wonders, um, creating lots of quirky furniture, the insect series, this is kind of the inspiration for it, um, using kind of comfortable sort of velours and velvets and furs and things like that. Again, very playful. Um, but very creative because they're able to create designs that are furniture that are kind of heavy and, and big and then things that are more delicate like the lighting. Um, so across the board. Cartel, yeah, another brand that uh, were 
again to engage with lots of big name designers. This is a new lamp by um, Philippe Stark. Very colourful stand. They always have very bright, colourful stands. Um, very big and uh, lots of products that they bring out at uh, Milan. So again, it's just demonstrating the importance of Milan in terms of launching. And these things you probably won't see for a year. That's the thing about Milan. You get to see things way ahead of any other show um, because it has such a draw from around the world. So many people go to Milan that you know, you'll have people from China, you have people from America, um, so they know that it has a lot of impact. Wallpaper, of course, wouldn't be Milan without wallpaper. Um, but this was all about religion, and it was more about the idea of worship and religion and mummification and all those sort of different things that are associated with religion. So it's not necessarily about designing crosses, but it's very much about sarcophaguses and, 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 and uh, putting things perhaps on a plinth and different ways that religion can be interpreted. So they even had an area which was about football. So it's very much about um, football being something that people um, hold in high esteem. Um, so it's kind of about fanaticism and that kind of thing. So it was an interesting take on, on religion because that was the, the general term, but it was, it was very related to design and, and a different viewpoint and perspective on religion. And this is also part of um, the wallpaper area, which is um, a company called Toilet Paper, <laughs> um, who produce these weird and wild kind of coverings and finishes, which in they're, on their own, they look a bit odd, but actually when you repeat them and you put them in a setting like this, which is like some sort of cafe they've created, it can actually work. Um, and then this, to me, in some ways sums up, I think, Milan in that it was fun, it was bright, it was carefree, it was playful, and um, a little bit adventurous, but also a bit conservative sometimes, um, but generally, about exhibition and about showing off. Um, and I think that's the most important thing that comes about from going to something like that. It's uh, the networking, the people you meet, what you see, the inspiration you get, the, the kind of um, you know, ideas that companies might have. And even if it's not something that you might key into and like and think, oh, yes, I can use that, but it will be something that um, you will see and, and relate to perhaps later on. So it's also an indicator of how things are going. Voila, that's the end. So I'd like to... Um, I just want to uh, say a few thank yous um, to Adram Group for organising this. Um, very appreciative of that, all the support. <laughs> Savina, in particular, for um, <laughs> curating this. <laughs> to Matteo Bianchi for his time and his uh, designs. And uh, the next uh, event that I will be reporting on, not perhaps doing an event like this, but uh, online, um, is the Index Design Series in Dubai, uh, which coincides with Clark and World Design Week, but I'll be flying back for Clark and World. So I'll be there. Half of it and here, half of it, <laughs> just to let you know. Um, and those are my details if you want to contact me. Thank you very much. <laughs>